Yeah. Okay, we're live. Okay, we're live. Yes. Well, good morning. I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order. And it's just nine o'clock. And uh, we have, um, we're still waiting for, for one member, but I'm sure they'll be long shortly. Um, moved by member Quinn, second by member Grogan Green, be it resolved that committee of adjustment agenda dated August the 8th, 2022 be adopted. All those in favor. And, um, Are there any declarations of uh, interest? Seeing none. And we'll have the adoption of the minutes. And uh, that is moved by member Grogan Greens, checked by member Quinn. Nope, oh, wait a minute. But I look something up. I don't have the adoption of the minutes here. Okay. Okay. Moved by member Quinn, second by member Grogan Green, and be resolved that committee of adjustment minutes dated July 11th, 2020, be adopted. All those in favor? That's carried. Okay, and then would you like to do your thing as well? Can I get you that mute microphone? Oh, yeah, just a second. Oh, I'm <laughs> hang on because it. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It is required that I make a few statements, then I will explain the procedures of the hearing. This electronic hearing is being held in accordance with Section 238 of the Municipal Act due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The members of the Committee of Adjustment present are Chair Alan Edwards, members Joe Quinn, and Lisa Grogan Green. I can confirm we have quorum. I can also confirm that senior staff and planning staff are present. Public input on this August 8, 2022 agenda was invited to the following email address, planning at muskokalakes.ca. It should be noted that the motions have been pre-populated with random movers and seconders to expedite the meeting. When it is time to vote, members shall physically raise their hand until the chair has confirmed the vote. If the vote is unclear, a verbal vote shall be recorded. This is not considered a recorded vote. Now I will explain the hearing process. The planner will provide an explanation and purpose of the application, the date the notice was circulated, and planning staff's comments. All internal and external submissions were sent to the committee members on Friday, August 5th, 2022. The planner will also present any submissions received after this date. 
The committee will then hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent if they wish to add any information or to substantiate their proposal. Please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our record. The committee will hear from those in support of the application and those in opposition to the application. Again, please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. If you are here to speak on an application, please wait to raise your hand in Zoom until the planner presents the relevant application. The committee will then hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent to respond to any questions or concerns that were raised. The committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant and or staff. The committee will then debate the application and make a decision based on the information presented at the hearing. Please note that the effect of written and oral submissions on decisions of applications for consent and minor variances and the reasons for minor variance decisions as both required under the Planning Act will be pre-populated with stand standard wording. However, the committee may decide to add reasons and or effects to the standard wording after voting on a decision. It must be noted that the chair has a vote on each application and can participate in the discussion. Additionally, there is a 20 day appeal period from the date of the decision. In the case of a minor variance application, a building permit is not available until after the appeal period and no appeals are received. When you present at the hearing, please provide us with your name and mailing address. Presentations are limited to five minutes unless otherwise permitted by the committee. Please note the resolutions are automatically written in the positive to assist in completing decisions as opposed to writing out each resolution. This does not in any way mean an application is going to be approved. Lastly, please take down the pink notice signs that were posted on your property to advertise today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Moore. And uh, I'm going to read this, this statement. Today's meeting is being live streamed and recorded on the Township of Muskoka Lakes website and YouTube channel. By participating in the open public meeting today, you are consenting to your image, voice, and comments being recorded and posted online. Thank you. And our first application is A2322, and that's Ms. Walker. Good morning, Chair Edwards and members of committee. The first application to be heard is minor variance application A-23-22 in the name of J. Nineteen Holdings Incorporated. The subject property is known municipally as 1153 Roberts Bay Road, Unit 11. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted, or sorry, submitted site plan on page 41 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to demolish and replace an existing sleeping cabin. Relief is requested from section 4.1.62 of bylaw 2014-14 being the maximum floor area requirement for a sleeping cabin. The maximum floor area for a sleeping cabin is 650 square feet. The proposed sleeping cabin is to have a floor area of 1,624 square feet. The requested variance is 974 square feet. Please note a variance was granted in May of 2004 to permit the existing land-based sleeping cabin to have a floor area of 830 square feet. Relief is also requested from section 4.1.3.5 of bylaw 2014-14 being a minimum front yard setback requirement. The proposed sleeping cabin is to be set back 30 feet from the high water mark where 50 feet is required. The requested variance is 20 feet. Please note the existing sleeping cabin is set back 31.7 feet from the high water mark. The applicant also proposes to demolish and replace a two story boathouse containing the storage use on the upper level. As part of the redevelopment of the two story boathouse, a new portion consisting of a rooftop sun deck is proposed. Relief is requested from section 4.1.7 and 4.1.711 of bylaw 2014-14, being the minimum side yard setback for a boathouse with a rooftop sun deck. The proposed two-story boathouse with a rooftop sun deck was to be set back 35 feet from the westerly side lot line projection, where 40.5 feet is required. 
The requested variance is 5.5 feet. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 11 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and two comments have been received to date. Comments have been received by Nick Snyder, the township's, township's chief building official and Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting, but I can read any comments in full at the request of committee. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. Staff are recommending that relief in minor variance application A-2322, Nineteen Holdings Incorporated from the maximum floor area for a sleeping cabin be denied and relief from the front yard setback and side yard setbacks be approved. Staff have no further comments at this time, but I'm happy to assist committee with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. Is the uh, owner or agent here wish to speak on this? Yeah, they're both here. I'm trying to promote them to Canada. Okay. Uh, the agent is in. Okay. Can, can you hear me, Mr. Chair? I just accepted the unmute and it and it uh, rebooted my Zoom, but I think, I, yes, I think I'm here now. Yes, we can hear you. Excellent, thank you, sir. Um, just in terms of introductions, uh, my name is David Bronskill, B-R-O-N-S-K-I-L-L. -L. Um, we act, uh, from Goodman's LLP, we act as agents for the Nineteen family who are the applicants here. And just in terms of my mailing address is 333 Bay Street, Suite 3400, Toronto, Ontario, um, M5H2ST. And my email is dbronskill at goodmans.ca. Um, Mr. Chair, um, this is an application and I'm gonna focus most of my comments on the GFA for the sleeping cabin uh, that we submit should be approved by the committee as meeting the four tests. Uh, uh, my client, uh, as I noted, the 19 family bought this property uh, more recently uh, after having done inspections and its due diligence with the township. And I'll be speaking about that in a moment about why that's important. Um, it is their family property. Uh, they have a number of children um, and they are looking uh, to uh, have the property suitable for use uh, both by them in the short term, but also in the long, long term as their family hopefully grows. Um, it is a generous property at about 2.1 acres located on a beautiful peninsula fronting onto Lake Joseph. And I do need to spend just a little bit of time talking to you about that property in a moment, but I just wanted to describe the proposal um, uh, for you first. Um, as noted, it is a sleeping cabin that is being proposed, about 1,624 square feet. It's an increase of 410 over the existing. It's a similar built envelope as existing, no impacts noted on view, natural features, aesthetics, neighbors, or anything like that. Um, and it really is to accommodate a true sleeping cabin. The plans themselves show uh, an area uh, overlooking the lake that would be used for congregation, a bunk room that has a void over top of it, um, and then two upstairs bedrooms and two bathrooms. A kitchen that did exist in the existing sleeping cabin, um, uh, which my client did not install, um, has been removed and will be removed as part of this process. Um, I do need to talk to you about the property, which is why we think the variances are appropriate here. And if you have a package in front of you, there's an excellent site plan from the architects on page 43 of your materials. Um, I can also put it up on the screen if that's, if that's easier for anybody. Uh, but this truly is a unique property. Although it's one property, it does appear as two separate lots. And we did a lot of due diligence when we were retained looking at why that was the case, thinking that in fact, it might be two separate lots. Each of the properties has, has its own municipal address, one associated with the north, one with the south. Each has their own separate and distinct shoreline frontages, about 220 feet on each frontage. So just below the minimum requirement. The northern shoreline faces Black Forest and Anchor Islands. The south shoreline fronts onto an unnamed inlet of Lake Joseph. And today, this lot is in fact divided in half by a, a road or right of way that serves as an access to the parcel beyond the property on the peninsula. So it, it is in fact divided by that road or right of way. The existing two-story dwelling sits on the north portion. The sleeping cabin is on the south. 
And the goal of this is to have that sleeping cabin, frankly, as a place where a family could sleep without having to um, uh, be, be jammed into a smaller facility and have to walk up to the main area of across the road to the northern portion to be able to have an area to congregate. So this would frankly allow a family just to have a sleeping quarters with the bathrooms. Now, when my client purchased the property, this uh, existing cabin on the southern portion was there, um, 1,214 square feet, although the variance granted in 2004 was for 830 um, square feet with a screened in porch. But it appears that the previous owner constructed these additions over and above the variances, but it's existed for a number of years and prior to our client's purchase of the property. Here's a key fact for you. Township staff inspected the property. They provided a certificate of inspection and occupancy on April 22nd, 2021. And the Nineteen family relied on that certificate when they did their due diligence and purchased the property. So the township, in fact, told them that the existing cabin of approximately 1,200 square feet was legal. Now, what are the arguments against? Fear of precedent. Given the unique circumstances of this lot, with it effectively being divided by the road, having two municipal addresses and functioning as two lots, we don't think that this serves as a precedent. Um, we would also factor in the township's inspection of the property as part of that. Secondly, a fear that a kitchen could be installed later. Now, our client has acted, frankly, in a very forthright matter with the township. They've agreed to a condition for no kitchen. They've come forward to the township to try and correct this addition. Uh, I don't think it's fair to express our con a concern that our client would then reinstall the kitchen in an illegal fashion, given how forthright it has been with the township. Final quick note in terms of the staff report, there is fairly a comment in, this comment in the staff report that the additional square footage could be supported if in fact the lot could be severed. The only frankly thing against severing this lot is the fact that the frontages are, are I would say at 220 feet, they don't meet the 300 feet, but it's pretty darn close and it's two separate frontages. So in fact, it has 220 on the south, 220 on the north, 440 today this lot frankly could be severed. And so therefore um, it is appropriate to have the larger sleeping cabin here on that Southern portion. Um, and then one final note, Mr. Chair, our client has been fully transparent with the township. It has been prejudiced by the township's actions, but my client is doing everything it can to mitigate the impacts of that inspection and that certificate of occupancy from April, 2021. Um, my client, the family is disappointed. The township has not found a way to mitigate the impacts of its own actions. And we had hoped this committee application would be the process to enable everyone to move beyond the township's mistake. And Mr. Chair, we still hope that this is the case. Um, so thank you, sir, for the opportunity to make the presentation on behalf of the family. And obviously I'm open to any questions that the panel may have. All right, thank you very much. Is thank there you, Mr. Chair. Is wishing to speak in support of this application? Unless the, the homeowner wants to speak, there's nobody else. Anyone wish to speak in opposition? No. No? Are there questions from the members? Uh, yes, Mr. Pink. Thank you, Chair, and uh, good morning, committee. I just wanted to clarify uh, a few items uh, from the uh, delegates' presentation with respect to the municipality's uh, inspection and uh, apparent legalization of, or uh, issuance of a final occupancy in regards to the building in question. Uh, the building itself was built uh, some time ago, again, by the uh, previous owner. Inspections were carried out uh, by the building department and a final occupancy was not issued initially as there were some outstanding uh, matters. Uh, several years later, I believe, or after some period of time, a follow-up inspection was requested in order to receive final occupancy and only those matters that were outstanding uh, uh, from earlier inspections were inspected and that occupancy granted. However, what occurred, uh, I do believe by the prior owner uh, was subsequent enlargements. Um, so that is why the uh, final occupancy was granted. Uh, just wanted to clarify that matter and I'm able to answer any further questions that the committee has. Okay, thank you. Member Creaser. 
Um, I think I'd have to agree with staff that uh, it should be refused for the size of it. They're saying that they're existing as so much, but they are asking for overages on top of that. And to be honest, no plans. They speak of plans, but I don't see any plans in these packages to see what's happening in either building, which I find a little disconcerting when you're saying that something's going to be happening on that. I have no plans in my package to look at. So um, in my opinion, I think I would have to agree with staff on this or they seek a consent severance. That would, to me, makes lots of sense on this application. But anyways, that's my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Any other members? So we sure it's gone to, to the uh, committee now. Uh, yes, Member Green. Can you hear me? Okay. There we go. Um, yeah, I think that the, I agree with the planners as well. I think this is a case where, you know, it's the, uh, the old saying, uh, quit while you're ahead. I think the property already has a lot of benefits. Um, it is unusual, but me too, for, uh, late frontages don't really justify additional buildings in terms of lot coverage. It's more perhaps arguing, arguments could be made about something related to docking or boat houses, but the actual dwellings on land, I don't see why they should receive any additional benefits and they should the property should be treated like any other property in any other cabin that is already grandfathered, I guess, because of some things that were done illegally. Um, so I don't see that we should provide this property owner with any additional benefits. Yes, member Quinn. Um, you know, he made reference to this thing being almost like two lots um, with a with a roadway between well the roadway goes to one cottage that was owned by the same family as the former owner that did some of this illegal stuff to this property and um, I think they thought maybe they're in the wild west but it was really always one property not two and it was so his mom and dad could pass through and get to their place without going by boat so I really don't feel it was ever uh, a two lot scenario. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, I was just looking at page uh, 29 and the uh, boathouse. I, I'm having trouble seeing how many slips are in there. It looks like it's more of a, a, a finished area or will be in that. Um, and that I, I, I just wondered uh, if staff have the drawings, they should be maybe checking into it at some point. But uh, hearing what the uh, committee has said, so I understand that uh, I'll read this completely and then we'll go over it. Moved by member Grogan Green, second member Quinn, be it resolved that application A2322 Neenstein Holdings Inc. to permit a construction of a new land-based sleeping cabin and a new two-story boathouse with an associated rooftop sum deck is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One to permit a land-based sleeping cabin to have a floor area of 1,224 square feet. Two, to permit an existing sleeping cabin to be set back 30 feet from the high water mark. And three, to permit a boathouse with a rooftop sum deck to be set back 35 feet from the westerly side lot line projection. These variants are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Alan? So. What was the square footage on that? Well, so, right now, it, I'm reading it the way it was. It was 1,624. And then I'm going to ask the uh, committee, so that option one, to permit a land-based sleeping cabin to have a floor area of 1,624 square feet. Uh, you want that taken out? I, is that right? Remember Quinn, yes? Member Green. Sorry, I, I, I'm say that again. What I'm asking is the land-based sleeping cabin. Okay, it's in this here at 1,624 square feet. Mm -hmm. You do not want that in. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Okay, uh, Member Creaser. 
Uh, definitely, although I don't understand why we would give a setback variance for something unless they just worked within that and what kept well, within... it. Over, I think the cabin's already set back at that. Is that right, okay. Mr. Kirk? So number one is out. And um, to permit this existing sleeping cabin to be set back 30 feet from the high water mark, to permit a boathouse with a rooftop sun deck to be 35 feet from the westerly side lot line projection. That now becomes one. That now becomes two. Um, and I imagine that the building department will will um, will make sure it's it's what was uh, allowed eight hundred and eight hundred thirty square feet. Okay, so I've read one them. question. Uh, we put anything about uh, the boathouse having uh, storage, storage only? I'm having, I'm having trouble hearing you. I don't know why that is, but what about the boathouse having um, the storage? Is that on title? Yes, Mr. Sharp, just a second. I'll have to switch everything off here. Good morning, committee, and thank you, Chair Edwards. I'll just uh, clarify, um, the original boathouse that's now being replaced uh, was constructed, uh, I believe, in around 2005 at a time when uh, storage, when a storage use was permitted in the uh, second story, and that use would be uh, permitted to continue. Um, there's nothing, you know, on title um, to say that it can't be. Uh, so I just thought I'd clarify that uh, that point. Thank you. Okay, so you've heard the amended motion. All those in favor? Okay, that is carried. Well, the, the lower level of both house, like it's. Yeah. You want to check that. Okay, well, thank you very much. You have uh, at least the minor variances other than the uh, the uh, square footage, and it would be going back to the 830 square feet as was uh, actually uh, uh, approved. Thank you. And the next application is A2822 Bagley, and that is uh, Ms. Crowder. Thank you and good morning, Chair Edwards and members of committee. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A2822 in the name of Bagley. The subject lands are known municipally as 1019 O'Connell Lane. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 69 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows. To permit the construction of a single story garage and a shed on a lot, resulting in a lot coverage of 8.7%, where 8% is permitted within 200 feet of the high water mark. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 13 days in advance of this meeting, and two submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, and Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, both stating that they have no objection to the application. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection to the application, provided the following recommendations be implemented. That the existing sheds, temporary garage and storage container be removed as intended, and that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for retention of vegetation and plantings to revegetate the shoreline buffer. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you very much. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here who wishes to speak on this? Yeah, they're both, and they're ready to speak. Yes, Thanks. good morning, Chair and Committee. Thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, look at our variants. Um, um, I don't really have too much to add, uh, just in regards to 
rebuff rebuffering the uh, the shoreline. Um, my wife and I have owned this property for since two thousand and nine. Um, the shoreline is essentially the way it was when we purchased the property. Um, the only slight change there has been, there was one uh, maple tree that was taken down due to danger of it uh, hitting the our, the house. Um, but the stump was left in place and there's actually a new uh, maple tree growing from that. And I pruned it so that it could be a, a regrow essentially in the same place. Uh, that being said, I am willing to uh, take any recommendations um, and guidance as far as uh, revegetating uh, that buffer area. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We need your your uh, mailing address and postal code, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, uh, Paul Bagley, B A G L E Y, uh, 1019 O'Connell Lane, Utterson, Ontario, P zero B one M zero. Okay, thank you very much. And we have somebody uh, wishing to speak on this. Yes, uh, good morning, Eric Munt. Uh, okay. committee, and thank you, Chair Edwards. Uh, my name is Eric Munts of the Taconan Group, uh, it's Three Armstrong Point Road, Port Carling, Ontario, P0B1J0. Uh, we are just the agent um, on behalf of the owner. Um, hoping just uh, staff uh, would could confirm just this if this was not a minor variance that this would still the a new garage within 200 feet of the high water mark would require site plan approval regardless is that is that correct sorry I'm, I'm, I'm getting a terrible echo here is okay. anybody um Yes, Ms. Crowder, would you like to? Thanks, Chair Edwards. Um, for this specific application, I believe your question is if um, you weren't seeking a variance, if the garage itself would trigger site plan? Yeah. Um, so I believe it just depends on the size of the garage. And I'm just going through my, to confirm it. Um, And I think, um, unless Bryce is here to confirm that I believe it would. Okay, thank you. I uh, just wanted to confirm that. Um, I guess I would just also note for the application that the height of the garage uh, is below the, the max allowable 20 feet at about seven feet, 17 feet of height and is not really visible from the lake as it will be hidden behind the existing cottage and the tall mature trees. Um, and then also just in terms of the placing of the cottage itself, we did look at trying to place it behind the 200 feet um, uh, setback from the high water mark. Uh, it just wasn't really possible in this location. And then how it ended up in this propo proposed location um, was just due that this is sort of the best spot on the site um, with those, uh, the existing sheds being removed. This is. Uh, just a nice flat surface and, and everywhere else would really require extensive site work um, for it to work out. But I'm um, here uh, to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support or opposition to this application? Yeah. No? Okay. Are there questions from the members? Seeing none? Oh, yes, Member Quinn. Uh, Joe, you have to turn your speaker on. I'm just um, in the pictures. There's one with the with the. There's one picture in there. It looks like it might be a different property. It sh it shows the it's figure two approximate location a uh, uh, a proposed shed in red, but it looks like the back of a different cottage. What, uh, what, what page are you on now, Mr. Well, Quinn? I'm not on a page, I'm on figure two. 
uh, page three of of sixteen. Oh. So I'm in the report and I'm into the planning pictures, and um, there's one with a a camper trailer, a trailer, and it's got a, a box that says approximate location and proposed shed, but it looks like it's it's a different lot that I'm looking at. Um, Chair Edwards, I think I can provide some clarity. Okay. I believe the photo that you are looking at is figure two. Yeah. The report. Yeah. So the um, the box is um, the proposed shed location, the approximate location, and behind that is a different cottage. It is the uh, adjoining neighbor. Okay. Um, so this is um, looking to the left of the existing cottage. If you were looking down at the water. Um, that is the neighboring property. The existing cottage um, on the lot we're speaking of would be to the right of this box. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, just one second, Mr. Sharp. I'd like to say something. Thank you, Chair Edwards, and uh, apologies to interject. I just wanted to uh, clarify a comment uh, that Ms. Uh, Crowder made with respect to whether or not the proposed garage would trigger a requirement for site plan control. Um, the site plan control bylaw is somewhat difficult to interpret, uh, and I just needed to take a moment just to refresh my own memory on it, but I can confirm that uh, the garage would be exempt from that process um, if it did not require a variance um due to its size so uh, it's less than 650 square feet in ground floor area thank you thank you mr sharp are there any other questions or, or uh, comments i'll read the motion Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Grogan Green, be resolved that application A2822 vaguely to permit the construction of a garage and shed is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 1,865 square feet or 8.7% of the area of the lot within 200 feet of the high water mark. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and is subject to the following conditions. One, that the existing sheds, temporary garage and storage container be removed as intended. And two, that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for retention of vegetation and planting to revegetate the shoreline buffer. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That's Terry. And the next application is A2922 Milanovic, and that's Mr. Soya. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Good morning, members of the committee, members of the public. Uh, the next application to be heard is minor variance application A2922, in the name of Milanovic. Uh, the subject lands are located with the, in the urban center of uh, Bala and are identified as 3166 Muskoka Road 169. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted sketches on page 82 and 83 of the agenda package. And the subject property is zoned uh, community commercial C3. In this commercial zone, the establishment of a main commercial use is required prior to the establishment of an accessory use, such as residential development. Uh, in this case, the property does not contain a main commercial use. However, it does contain a legal non-complying residential dwelling and a covered porch addition to the dwelling has now been constructed without the benefit of a building permit. 
Uh, therefore, a variance has been requested in order to permit the accessory covered porch addition prior to the establishment of a main use. And notice of this public hearing was circulated in the last of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act, and two comments have been received. Uh, the Township's Billing uh, Division and Public Works Department have both advised that they have no concerns with the application, and there have not been any comments received from members of the public. A uh, detailed staff report has been prepared for committee's consideration and staff have recommended approval. I have no further comments at this time and uh, would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sawyer. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Okay. Good morning again. Good morning. Um, yeah, my name is Eric Munster. Do I need to repeat the address as well? Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Eric Munster of the Deconing Group, uh, Three Armstrong Point Road, Port Carling, Ontario, uh, P0B1J0. Um, thank you, staff, for the report and the recommendation that this application be approved. Um, I hope I don't have this mixed up, but it, it was my understanding that this covered porch. Um, was actually permitted with a building permit. And then after the fact, the permit was revoked. Um, I hope I don't have that mixed up. I do, like I have a letter um, from, um, um, from Nick Schneider um, revoking that permit. Um, so I just wanna clarify that. I, do, I, just, um, I do think that the, the owner did take the proper steps and then there was just a, a misunderstanding in the interpretation of the bylaw. And, that's why we are here today. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Choya. Can you put some light on that? Uh, through um, uh, Chair Edwards, I believe uh, Mr. Muntz is correct in that uh, there was a um, a letter sent by the building department after a, a permit was at uh, at one point issued. However, um, the issue here is that it was. Um, it was this porch was being built on a property where a main commercial use had not been established and therefore um, the variance is required. So I apologize for that, uh, um, the error in my explanation of, uh, of the his, his history of how this came to be. Thank you. Hopefully that uh, provides um, some clarification. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Are there questions from the members? No. Moved by member Grogan Green, second by member Creaser, be it resolved that application A2922 Milanovic to permit a covered porch addition to a, an existing dwelling is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to permit an accessory use covered porch addition to a dwelling prior to the establishment of a main commercial use. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any? Oh, sorry. Is there anyone in support or opposition? Thank you. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? That's carried. And the next application is A3022 Harding. And we have the planner for that one. Good morning, uh, members of uh, committee and members of the public. Can you get, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. My name is Jonathan Pock. Uh, I work for MHBC Planning. Um, just as an item of clarity, I am acting as the township's planning consultant in this matter due to, um, uh, you know, to avoid conflict of interest, uh, given the uh, applicant's position in the municipality. Um, so I have a uh, brief presentation just uh, verbally, um, and I'll just run through a few points and I can make myself available for any questions, uh, comments. Um, so th thank you again, uh, for, uh, 
for everyone attending. So the minor variance application uh, before committee and this item of the agenda is minor variance application A30-2022. And it has been submitted to facilitate the construction of a new boathouse, which is to be built on the same footprint as the existing boathouse on the subject property, save and except for the two southern boat slips, which are to be um, a little bit longer um, than what's uh, currently existing. And they're going to extend out into the lake an additional 10 feet, therefore uh, triggering the need for, for a minor variance due to the legal non-complying nature of the boathouse. Um, I would just direct committee's attention to page 102 of the agenda package for uh, just the site plans and elevation drawings that were uh, submitted by the applicant. The applicant's proposing to remove a, a frame garage, um, a canopy over the, as you'll note in the pictures in the staff report, uh, canopy over the personal watercraft or the sea dew lift, um, and a cover over the hot tub area, as well as a small section of dock on the south side of the boathouse. Um, so the uh, personal watercraft and um, small dock area will effectively reduce some of the, the shoreline width that's, um, that's currently existing on the property. Um, and really the extension of the, um, the uh, two slip area in the boathouse um, is really to accommodate uh, the sea dew with inside the boathouse. So it's therefore reducing some of the, the width of shoreline development. Um, so in order for the CD to be accommodated within the boathouse, it, it, there is a small bump out there for triggering, triggering the uh, need for the minor variance application. Um, notice was circulated uh, for this application on July 29th. Um, and uh, the minor variance is seeking relief for uh, four sections of the bylaw relating to uh, maximum lot coverage within 200 feet of the shoreline, uh, minimum required side yard setback for dock additions, maximum cumulative width for a single story boathouse addition and, um, and the side yard setback for the, for the boathouse addition. So as detailed in the staff report, uh, 2022-167, the proposed boathouse is gonna be sited in, in, the, um, in the same location as the existing one. And um, it's gonna be still remain well separated um, for docking and activity areas from neighboring properties. And um, the, the boat navigability is, is going to be uh, maintained uh, due to the orientation and separation between those um, uh, shoreline structures that are currently existing. Uh, we did uh, receive uh, five uh, letters of support of the application. And, and in general, it's um, all neighboring property owners, I believe one across from the bay as well. So those are included on, um, in our staff report. Um, and in the agenda package. There was an internal department comment from the building department and it was in, relating, uh, in relation to incorporating flood proofing measures, um, uh, which will be reviewed at time of building permit, um, as well as ensuring that the, uh, the habitable floor area on the main floor of the boathouse was above the flood uh, elevation of 226.7. So that will, again, will be reviewed at the building permit stage. Um, and there was a there was a comment with respect to um, the lower level being in, in compliance with the flood proofing and, and potentially resulting in an increase in height. But again, that would be uh, reviewed at the building permit stage um, uh, by building and, and planning staff. Um, so in summary, as noted in the in the uh, recommendation report, uh, staff is recommending approval of the application subject to four conditions. Um, uh, Happy to run through those if required, but um, in summary, it's it's uh, the entering of the site plan agreement and the removal of the docking uh, roof structures and the uh, canopy over the existing sea dew lift, um, just to ensure you know a belt and suspenders uh, approach uh, to ensuring that the applicant uh, develops in accordance with the site plan submitted. Um, uh, also included in our staff report is just. Um, an overview of how the um, application meets the four tests under the Planning Act. Um, and I will note that, uh, that um, the applicant does have a brief presentation also prepared. So um, I'm sure the uh, committee is provided with all the necessary information to make their decision. So um, with that, uh, I will turn it back over to you, Chair Edwards. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So the applicant's agents here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, go ahead. Hello again. I'm Eric Munz of the Deconan Group at 3 Armstrong Point Road, Port Carling, Ontario. And it's P0B1J0. Okay, so perfect stuff has the slideshow up already. Um, so we'll get started. Just thank you all uh, for allowing this application today. Our client has asked that we present his material materials and though he is in attendance, he would prefer to remain silent today, letting this application support from all of his neighbors speak for itself. Next slide, or no, yeah, we're good. Here's a photo of the boathouse in 1966 when the boathouse was, was constructed in conformance with the bylaw. The southern two slips in upper portion of the boathouse really haven't changed since that time. And as you can see from this photo, as you look at the right hand slip, it was not constructed very well back 50 plus years ago and today. The boathouse is literally falling into the water. Next slide, please. Here's a photo demonstrating why the boathouse needs to be rebuilt. Have a look at the window beside the construction level. Please know that the level on the right of the window is in fact vertical. Regrettably, the building is falling in the lake. Next slide, please. And here's a photo of the current boathouse from the water. Next slide, please. And here's a photo of the vegetation to the north of the boathouse. You will notice the mature trees are across the entire shoreline. Next slide, please. Can you hear me? Okay, the next slide. Okay, there we go. Here once again is a view from the lake. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, go back one more. There we go. Here once again is a view from the lake to further demonstrate how extensively vegetated this property is. What you can't see in this photo is a small gazebo just behind the boathouse, the bunky cottage 66 feet from the water, and a hot tub over 66 feet from the water. Okay. You froze in there? Hello? There we go. Can you hear? Are we okay now? Mm -hmm. um, did you get? Uh, I'll start off there again at slide six. Here we are. Here once again is a view from the lake to further demonstrate how extensively vegetated this property is. What you can't see in this photo is a small gazebo just behind the boathouse and a bunky cottage 66 feet from the water and a hot tub over 66 feet from the water. We should point out that in the rebuild, we do not propose to add any habitable space with the second story of the boathouse and it will be rebuilt in the same size and location as is currently to utilize existing cribs that were rebuilt in 2014. Next slide, please. The only change to the boathouse would be to expand the southern two slips to create slightly more room inside for boats. And yes, our client only stores boats on the first floor of the boathouse there are no couches, TVs, or fish cleaning stations in this area of the boathouse. Next slide, please. The other advantage to this rebuild is that on the north end of the docks, there's a CDO lift and canopy. This adds considerably to the shoreline coverage and visual impact. Part of the boathouse extension is to create a small interior slip for the CDO, which will help bring the docks and shoreline coverage more into conformity. Next slide, please. Here's a photo of the existing boathouse from the front compared to a photo of the proposed boathouse. Yes, you will see there's really not much change between the two. Next slide, please. And as you can see from this photo, the first story of the existing boathouse is only 28 feet from the shore. 
And in the rebuild, it is our client's intent to only go out at about 10 feet additional or 38 feet in total. This will keep the boathouse well below the allowable 50 feet to minimize the build form on the water. Next slide, please. Here's another photo of the existing boathouse from the neighbors uh, from the southern property with the new boathouse in place. As you can see, the added 10 feet will be virtually indetectable other than improving the look of the overall boathouse. Next slide, please. Here's a board, before and after photo of the property from the lake coming into the bay. Again, it should be noted that, that there will be no impact on the neighbors and all of the, all of the existing natural shoreline and trees will be maintained by rebuilding the boathouse in its same location. Next slide, please. Here are a couple of photos from the neighbors dock and deck of his boathouse looking directly north. As you can see, the existing boathouse is set back into the shore. Next slide, please. Here's a photo from the southern neighbor's cottage looking out onto the lake. As you will notice, they can't even see your client's boathouse from their cottage. Next slide, please. We should also point out that this area of Lake Rosso has several small lots uh, with over width dock and boathouse structures, many two-story boathouses and even a rare three-story boathouse on 210 feet of frontage. Regarding the issue of lot coverage, yes, the first story boathouse expansion will add 200 square feet of lot coverage to this already legal non-conforming property. However, it is proposed that a 180 square foot garage as well as 100 square foot cedar cover will be removed, thereby reducing the actual lot coverage in dock width in this redevelopment. However, the report also recommends the removal of an additional 81 square foot feet um, which will, which is the snow cover roof over the hot tub. We would like to ask committee's consideration to leave this, which still allows for a reduction in lot coverage. Here's why. Next slide, please. The porous deck under the hot tub and solid non-permeable insulated cover on the hot tub are allowed as of right without affecting lot coverage. Basically the hot tub as you view it in this photo doesn't count towards lot coverage including the current non-permeable folding cover on the hot tub, which equals an area of 64 square feet. Next slide, please. If you look at this mechanical cover associated with a different hot tub, you will note the same 64 square feet non-porous cover. However, this style of cover would not be included in lot coverage, but this is a $10,000 option just for this unique mechanical cover. Next slide, please. Now, as you look at this photo of the actual hot tub, the clear plexiglass roof to keep the snow off to, to prevent damage from having to shovel off the lid of the, in the winter, the full area of 81 square feet is now included in lot coverage. Next slide, please. And from this photo, you will see this hot tub has been carefully placed in between trees to ensure maximum vegetation and is 60 feet plus back from the water. As you can see from this photo, the tree canopy actually covers the entire hot tub. To say that this plexiglass roof over 64 square foot non-permeable co cover adds 81 square feet of lot coverage is somewhat misleading considering the hard insulated cover of the hot tub directly under the plexiglass is allowed or not counted. At best, adding this plexiglass roof increases the non-permeable area by 17 square feet, which is the outside area of the hard cover. Additionally, as the hot tub is well set back from the water and hidden between all of the trees, there is no added build form to the waterfront, which is, base, is the basic intent of this bylaw. <coughs> because of this, we would ask the committee allow the snow roof, roof cover over the hot tub to remain and that dimensions be altered on this application to account for seven square feet, which still brings the lot coverage down to 11%. Are you just about finished or going? Yes, ahead? last, last slide, last slide, Chair, thank you. Or the only final question we would have is that if shoreline structures, are, shoreline structures are exempt from site plan, and as you can see from all the photos, our client has maintained a well-vegetated natural shoreline buffer and property, what value is a site plan adding to this application? How can plantings be added to an already full mature shoreline we would kindly ask that the condition for site plan not be required. Thank you for your time and um, we're here for questions. Thank you. All right, thank you very much.
Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support? I don't believe so. Nicholas Dicomin is here. I'm not sure if he's going to speak. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? No. No? Are there questions from the members? No questions? Oh, yes. Member Creaser. Uh, I'm curious about the coverage issue. I actually don't have any problem with adding the, uh, the roof to the coverage and increasing the coverage number. Um, I'm not sure how anyone else feels about that on the committee, but I don't see that it's a real huge impact. Okay, Member Quinn. I agree. Creaser. Okay. Sure. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then I will read the. the, the, the yes. Pardon. Yes. Yes, John. Thank you, Chair Edwards and uh, Member Creaser, uh, for your comments. I would note that uh, the applicant has identified on their site plan that that um, hot tub structure be removed. Um, the condition, if um, committee were to um, permit that uh, hot tub cover to remain, uh, they would need to uh, amend one of the conditions. Um, and also, um, if that hot tub structure is also included in lot coverage, the, the variance would for um, lot coverage would also need to be amended. Um, therefore, in, as such, like the, the lot coverage that they applied for would be more than uh, what would be recommended through the staff report. Um, and I would also draw your committee's attention to um, the section in the official plan that speaks to one tenth of lot coverage being permitted um, and any increase above 11% wouldn't be permitted. Um, so the, what's permitted now on the, on the site plan as per uh, what was submitted in the application, um, that is at the 11% that would be, would be permitted under the official plan. So we are saying if we leave the, the cover, it's gone over 11% then? Correct, and uh, there would need to be an amendment to one of the uh, conditions included in the staff report. Uh, is there any way you can you can get it down to eleven with with leaving it on? Sorry, the the proposal right now, as it stands with the hot tub um, cover included, um, is at the eleven. So if it was to be left on it would go over the 11% that was permitted under the- uh, Okay, uh, what I was asking, is there anything else on that property you can take a roof off it to get it down to 11%? And if um, not th yeah, thank you, Chair Edwards. There is, um, the, the applicant is removing the jet ski lift um, and the awning over that, um, as well as the frame garage um, behind the, the sleeping cabin on, on the property. So those three efforts, the removal of, of the uh, hot tub cover, the jet ski lift, and also the uh, the frame garage were in efforts to get that 11%. So um, keeping that would push it over that, that amount. Okay. Uh, I'd seen member Quinn, I think you had your hand up. Yes. yes. Um, the existing is 11.7 and you know, we're allowed to, we have some leeway to go from 10 to 11. It with, what would the what would the percentage be over eleven if we allowed that sixty four square feet? And do we not have some leeway when something's going from eleven point seven to say eleven point two to to have um, to be able to approve it? Thank you, Member Quinn. Uh, I can just do a quick calculation of what that would be, uh, but I also might um, turn to uh, Bryce, um, with respect to the interpretation of um, how they've dealt with legal non-complying uh, lot coverages uh, in the past. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to let Mr. Sharp uh, come in just one second.
Thank you, Chair Edwards, and uh, thank you, Member Quinn and uh, Mr. Pock for your handling of this application. Um, just to clarify, uh, with respect to the official plan policy, I, I believe, uh, based on what I'm seeing on the site plan, that the existing lot coverage within 200 feet is 11.7%, and that amount would be considered legal non-complying, um, and therefore that amount could remain um, subject to approval by committee. So in other words, if you have an amount that's more than 11% that's legal non-complying, that amount can be reconfigured but not increased um, through a, a planning approval. Preferably it would be reduced um, in most cases. But again, um, just uh, to, to clarify uh, the, the reading of the official plan policy, I'm happy to provide any uh, further clarification if, if that's required. And I'd uh, expect that Mr. Pock could confirm um, what the resultant lot coverage uh, within 200 feet would equate to including the 81 square foot uh, covered area over the hot tub. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Have you got that figured out yet? Yep, give me two seconds here. And I also might ask the um, Mr. Uh, Munz as well, just to double check my math here. But I do believe it gets it's eleven point one percent. Just rounding up, round, yeah, rounding, yeah, 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 approximately eleven point one. 11.1 because it's legal non-complying at 11.7 and we are moving more towards complying and to me it's a it's a minor over the minor variance i would be in support of keeping that roof over the hot tub okay can you give me the um the uh lot coverage then with the roof on that right now we're at, at 2769 Yeah, through you, Chair. So if it's 2,769. Um, sorry, 2,000. Uh, sorry. One sec. I just want to make sure I'm looking at the rate. On mine right now, it's 2,769. Yes, that's correct. That and that's not including the. Um, so it'd be twenty fifty. Yeah. Sorry. So what would it be with the with the hot tub roof cover? Yeah, two thousand eight hundred and fifty square feet. Two thousand eight hundred and fifty square feet, and that would be eleven point one. Is it? Eleven point three. Eleven point three. Okay. okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to read, I'm going to read this. Moved by member Creaser, second by member Quinn, be it resolved that application A3022 Harding to permit the construction of a dock additions and a single story boathouse addition is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 2,850 square feet or 11.3% of the area within 200 feet of the high water mark. Two, to permit a cumulative width of a single story boat house addition to be 26 feet. Three, to permit a dock additions to be set back zero feet from the closest point of the southerly side 
plot line projection and four to minute a single story boathouse addition with a rooftop sun deck to be zero feet in the southerly lot line projection. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision are subject to the following conditions. One, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for retention of shoreline buffer. Two, that the applicant is required to move this southern corner of docking and the personal watercraft lift and cover as shown on the proposed site plan drawing prepared by DECON group dated April 29th, uh, 2022. And that the applicant be requested to remove a roof structure, uh, not when we're taking off. And three, that the applicant be required to remove the frame garage on the proposed site plan drawing proposed by DECON Group, April 29, 22. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you all, have a good day. Okay. And the next application is A3422 Morgan, and that's Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-34-22 in the name of Morgan. The subject property is known municipally as 1133 Leonard Lake Road 1. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 127 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a second story addition to an existing garage for use as storage and as a sleeping cabin. Relief is requested from section 4.1.3 of bylaw 2014-14, being the maximum height requirement of 20 feet for an accessory building. The resultant accessory building is to be 23.5 feet in height. The requested variance is 3.5 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 14 days in advance and seven comments have been received to date. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, and Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician. Letters of support have also been received from Angelo Corvus, a neighboring property owner to the north, Steve and Marlene McAllister, neighboring property owners to the south, Betty Itzbitzer, area property owner, Bruce McNeely and Donna McNeely, area property owners, Kent Taylor and Wendy Taylor, area property owners. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objections. I have no further comments, but I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Um, yes, the applicant is here. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can, sir. Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair, committee members and staff. Uh, I don't have we, a... Uh, we need your address. Uh, oh, sorry. And, and yes. post code. And you can yes. turn uh, your video on if you can. Uh, my video is supposed to be on. I don't know what else. To, oh, sorry. Yes, there we go. Uh, start video. There we go. That's Thank better. you very much. Yes. Uh, so uh, my address is 2316 Nelson Avenue, West Vancouver, BC. Uh, V7V2R2. And in the application, it was centered uh, by mistake as N7N2R2. It's actually V7, V as in Victor, 7 Victor 2R2. Uh, not in the application, but in the documentation for the Committee of Adjustment that I received. 
Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I uh, have a few comments to make. Uh, the reason why I need this variance is because the intent is to lift the roof as one piece as is, yeah, uh, and build a second floor and then place the roof above, supposed to reconstruct an entire new roof. Um, and and uh, I'm not increasing the footprint. I'm not modifying the lot. I'm not cutting any trees. My garage and with the uh, second floor built above won't be seen by any of the neighbors. It's uh, almost not visible from from uh, from the waterfront as uh, as it was confirmed by the staff member that went and uh, checked the, the property so if there are any questions i'll gladly answer those but uh, uh, i i would certainly appreciate if i could build the uh, the second floor as proposed okay thank you is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application No? Anyone wishing to speak in? Oh, I'm sorry, no, no. And no one no, in opposition? Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, are there questions from the members? No questions? Moved by member Grogan Green, a sec by member Quinn, be it resolved that application A3422 Morgan to permit the construction of a second story storage sleeping cabin addition to an existing garage is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to permit an accessory building to be 23 feet, 0.5 feet in height. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that's carried. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I think at this time we'll take a comfort break. And uh, maybe make it about five minutes. That would be great. Thank you.
We can learn. Thank you. I'd like to call the meeting back to order. And our next application is A3622, forward, and that's Ms. Crowley. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Good morning, members of committee. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A3622 in the name of Pollard and Holly. The subject lands are known municipally as 37 Todd Holm Drive. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 155 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows. To permit the construction of a two-story garage on a property with a rear yard setback of six feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 15 days in advance of this meeting and two submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Tim Sofko, the township's public works technician, stating that they have no objection to the application. And comments have also been received from Nick Snyder, the township's chief building official, stating that they have no objection to the application, but note that consideration and review of sp spatial separation will be required for the rear and side property lines at the time of permit application. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you very much. Very nice much. to see the agents here. Yes, good morning, uh, Chair Edwards, uh, members of uh, committee. Uh, Stephen Fawner, Northern Vision Planning Limited, 109 Meadow Heights Drive, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L 184. I'm here representing uh, Rick uh, Pollard and Christine uh, Hawley in terms of their application uh, for a accessory garage uh, too close to the uh, rear lot line. Uh, I'd like to thank staff for their report. Uh, thank you, Emily. and. Uh, Appreciate the comments. And uh, I do have a uh, PowerPoint presentation if that could be uh, put up and we'll just uh, quickly run through that. All right. Yes, we can proceed on to the next slide. Thank you. Yeah, the, uh, the proposal I think, as you know, is a uh, variance from the rear yard setback. Normally it's 25 feet for a garage uh, of this size. Uh, it's uh, for a residential garage. It's a good size. It's uh, I've certainly seen larger, uh, but it is a, a reasonable size. And I think you'll see from the uh, proposed uh, site plan and from the pictures that it is uh, it's a reasonable application. Next. This is a copy of the overall site plan and it gives um, some statistics on the side there. Unfortunately, it's a little fuzzy. We'll go to the next one. Next slide, please. There we go, this is a little bit clearer. So you can see where the proposed uh, garage is in the uh, rear southwest corner of the property. Uh, if, if this were to be moved forward or towards the road to comply with the uh, uh, setback, uh, number one, you'd have a potential conflict with the existing uh, mantle from the uh, septic bed. You would also be closer to the neighbor. The neighbor's dwelling to the south is roughly in line with the dwelling on this property. So it's immediately to the south of what's labeled rock outcrop. Uh, and so moving it closer would be a greater potential impact uh, on that particular uh, neighbor. 
the other I'll show you, there's a location of a swale too that uh, comes into play as well. Next. So in terms of the site itself, this is the view from uh, Todd Home Drive. Uh, there is uh, existing dwelling and there is an existing uh, woodshed. That's what you see to the left. Next. And this is what I would call sort of an informal uh, laneway or driveway that leads actually into the backyard up uh, beside the existing dwelling. Next. And this is the uh, much of the rear yard. You can see the raised area. That is the um, uh, septic bed and the, the mantle itself. You can see the, the very high rise in terms of terrain uh, beyond this particular property off to the uh, right there. And that's something I'll mention in a moment. There is another shed on the property that is staying as well. And the proposed location of the proposed garage is where that uh, temporary uh, canopy shelter is. Next. So this is looking directly at the area that would be um, uh, where the garage would be constructed. Again, it's in the southwest corner of the property. The area in behind is wooded. I do have a further uh, photo of that. Next. This is uh, the area that's, you can see the corner of that uh, canopy uh, structure there. And there is a fire pit. There is a swale that actually goes to the left of that it's a covered piece of equipment. I think it's a log splitter there. There's actually a very, very small swale that takes drainage off that hill and takes it in front of that canopy area. Again, if we were to move the building forward or towards the uh, front lot line, we would be over that swale. Next. This is the rear lot line immediately behind the, uh, the canopy. Um, you can see off to the right that it is again, a, a wooded area. Uh, and, um, you know, this area will be cleaned up by having this all inside of the uh, garage. Next. This is looking, if I were to take the previous photo and just turn the other direction and go to the north, this is looking along the property line. This shed that you see here has actually been moved. It's been moved to the, to the right and does now comply with the six foot setback. It didn't at the time this was taken at the end of March. And you can see the rise of the land up to the left. Next. This is the view from approximately the front of uh, the garage towards the dwelling immediately to the south. There is some screening there. It's not a heavy screening, certainly, but there is a, there is a hedge there. Uh, and further along, you'll also see some cedars. I took a photo from further to the right of this towards the building and behind the cedars, and it makes it look like there's a great screen, but uh, quite frankly, I would have been a little biased and with that photo. Next. And this is the area in behind uh, the proposed dwelling on the neighboring property to the rear. This is part of a proposed plan of subdivision. I did speak with uh, Mr. Wayne Simpson and because of the terrain, it's highly unlikely that this is going to be uh, developed uh, uh, signif in any significant fashion for residential development. Next. So in terms of planning analysis, uh, there is an official plan criteria, which I went through in my planning justification report, and I won't repeat here. Uh, there's partial screening uh, from the neighbor and the distance to the neighbor's dwelling is approximately 85 feet. Next. Proposed coverage is well within the 35% permitted at 9.5%. I did point out the swale, and actually this garage will definitely enhance the appearance of the backyard and clean up the outside storage. Next. And I mentioned the lack of proposed use to the rear. And uh, you can have a smaller garage as of right, uh, could be permitted six feet from the rear lot line. And I would point out that the township bylaw does not limit the number of accessory buildings. So he could have multiple uh, smaller garages six feet from the rear lot line. Next. So in terms of the four tests for minor variance, in my opinion, the general intent of the official plan is maintained. Um, the official plan promotes development in urban centers. This is an accessory building. Uh, lot coverage is, is fine and there is a criteria that was satisfied. Next. In my opinion, the general intent and purpose of the comprehensive zoning bylaw is maintained. Um, the side yard setback does comply. Uh, the rear yard setback will allow this uh, building to be as far from the neighbor as possible. And again, lot coverage is, is fine. In, Next. 
In terms of desirability of, for development, again, it will neat and tidy up the uh, rear yard. The overall scale is uh, consistent with development in the area, and there is some buffering to the property to the south. Next. And the last test being, is it minor? I, that is really, quite frankly, up to committee, but I would suggest that uh, we look at impacts. And then in my opinion, the impact here is minimal and it cannot be seen uh, from the road and a smaller garage or multiple garages could have been built six feet from the rear lot line. So those are all my submissions, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Connor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone in opposition to this application? No? Questions from the members? No questions? Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that application A3622, Pollard and Holly, to permit the construction of a garage is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to permit a grand Rad, sorry, to be six feet from the rear lot line. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That's carried. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Okay, and the next one is A3522 Ogles Point Limited. And that's Ms. Crowder. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A3522 in the name of Orgles Point Limited. The subject lands are known municipally as 1039 Orgles Point Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 198 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows. To permit the construction of a sports court less than 200 feet from the high water mark and less than 15 feet from the rear lot line. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 14 days in advance of this meeting and two submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, and Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, both stating that they have no objection to the application. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection to the application. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you very much, Ms. Browder. And we, yes, Mr. Allen. Uh, thank you, Chair Edwards. Good morning, uh, members of the committee. Um, thank you, Ms. Crowder, for your uh, detailed report and positive recommendation. I am the agent for Orville's Point Road Limited. Uh, my name is Ryan Allen, a professional planner with Planscape Limited, 104 Kimberly Ave, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L1Z8. I have a brief presentation that I'd like to share with the committee. If that could be queued up, please. Mm -hmm. uh, the subject property is at 1039 Orgles Point Road um, and has frontage on Lake Joseph. Next slide, please. Uh, here's the location of the subject property. It is to the west of Port Carling. Next slide, please. As Ms. Crowder uh, explained, there's two variances associated with this application, one to permit a sports court with a front yard setback of 138 feet where the minimum is 200 feet and to permit a sports court with a rear yard setback of 10 feet where the minimum is 15 feet. Next slide, please. This is the uh, site plan uh, showing the subject property. Uh, there's an existing dwelling um, as well as an approved uh, sleeping cabin that is located in front of a new uh, septic bed that is to be installed. The proposed sports court is located to the rear of that septic bed, and you can see kind of at the, uh, the back end of the lot, there is a dashed square. That is the location of the sports court. It is approximately uh, 1,760 square feet. If you look to the west of the existing dwelling, you'll see a, a green shaded square. That is the existing uh, basketball court. It currently straddles the lot line and encroaches on either lot. 
It is uh, 2,364 square feet in size. Um, as part of this application, the existing sports court is proposed to be removed, and that area is to be revegetated and restored to um, you know, its, its original condition and grade. There are two small sheds that are proposed to be removed um, if, this variant is, um, if this variant is approved. I would also note that the existing um, sports court is approximately 50 feet set back from the shoreline, whereas the new proposed sports court is you know, over 135 feet. Next slide, please. Uh, there was a site plan that was recently approved for the new sleeping cabin. And as part of that site plan agreement that's been approved, there's been uh, 18 new trees to be planted in the front yard area, uh, 43 new shrubs, extensive native grasses and wildflowers uh, to replace the existing lawn with native ground cover. And over $23,000 in securities have been paid by the owner of the property to ensure this work is completed. And you can see the proposed sports court um, to the rear of that new septic bed on this landscaping plan. Next slide, please. This is a photo of the existing uh, White House, as the uh, owners like to call it. Next slide. Uh, beside the White House is a small shed as well as the existing sports court that is to be removed. That shed will also be removed if this variant is approved. Next slide, please. This is another view of the existing uh, basketball court. Next slide. Again, the basketball court. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the uh, lower view of the basketball court. Uh, a significant amount of uh, grading was done to establish a level area as part of the restoration um, and revegetation of the existing court, um, all of this existing rock fill will be removed and the original grades restored. Um, at the one end, uh, the fill is uh, approximately uh, six feet in, in depth. So a substantial amount of material is proposed to be removed. Next slide, please. This is the proposed location for the new court. This existing shed would be removed um, if the variance is approved. Uh, no tree removal is required. Uh, the land is very level and flat. Uh, no blasting is required. And there's a, a moderate amount of you know, vegetative shrubs that would have to be removed as you kind of see around the existing shed and to the right. Next slide, please. Uh, again, uh, the location of the proposed court on level grass open lawn area. And you can see the existing rear yard uh, those uh, pine trees uh, and the buffer that they provide will be retained. Next slide, please. This is a view of the location of the, of the approved um, sleeping cabin uh, that obtained approval under a recent site plan. Um, that lawn area is proposed to be restored, revegetated, and replanted. Next slide, please. So in terms of planning analysis, the new court, which is set back uh, much farther from the shoreline than the existing is smaller in area. The existing court will remove and restore the original grades and the landscape back to the uh, original configuration before the existing court was built. The new court um, is 1,760 square feet, which is significantly smaller than you would expect to see with, say, a tennis court, which is you know, over 7,000 square feet in area. And I would also note that if, uh, with the exception of the rear yard setback, um, a detached garage in this exact location and size would comply with the requirements of the bylaw. No tree removal and limited grading is required uh, due to the open level lawn area for the proposed court. The court is not visible from lakeside views and does not contribute to increased built form. The reduced setbacks, um, in my opinion, should be considered on a case by case basis. Um, it's my recollection when the municipality brought in the 200 foot uh, minimum setback limit, it was not to be a strict prohibition of all courts, but they would be considered on a case by case basis and courts that were located in a, uh, in a reasonable location, uh, tree, crop, tree cover, tree removal um, and slope. Uh, those factors are important considerations. I noted that there's been a uh, site plan that's been approved that requires some significant tree planting and revegetation and the existing trees along the rear lot line will continue to provide privacy for the neighbor. Next slide, please. It'd be my professional opinion that the proposed variances meet the four tests of the Planning Act and represent good planning. Be happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Allen. 
And is there anyone here wishing to speak in support? Against? No. Nope. Okay. Are there questions from the members? Seeing none. Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A3522, Ogles Point Limited, to permit the construction of a sports court is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a sports court to be set back 138 feet from the high water mark. And two, to permit a sports court to be set back 10 feet from the rear lot line. These variances are granted as shown on the on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That's carried. Thank you, committee. Have a good day. Thank you. And the next application is A. 3822 point, and that's Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Fair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A3822, the name of Bond. The subject lands have frontage on Lake Muskoka and are located at 1110 Keeler Road. Direct committee's attention to the submit is on pages uh, 221 and 222 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of this application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct a single story boathouse addition to an existing boathouse. Uh, in the waterfront residential um, WR1 zone, the maximum permitted cumulative width of a boathouse is 16% of the lot coverage. Uh, in this case, this lot has a frontage of 190 feet, and therefore the maximum permitted cumulative boathouse width is 30 feet. As a result of the proposed addition, the cumulative boathouse width will be 33 feet, and uh, the requested variance in this case is 3 feet. Notice that this public hearing was circulated 11 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act, and four comments have been received. Uh, the township's building Division and Public Works Department have both advised they have no concerns and two comments have been received from members of the public. Uh, Wallace and Martha Cribbs, owners of the abutting property to the west at um, 1116 Keeler Road submitted comments advising that they are in support of the application and George Cornwall submitted comments on behalf of the owners of 1118 Keeler Road stating that they are also in support and uh, have stated in that in their opinion, the addition will improve the appearance of the property away from the lake. Uh, staff have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration and have recommended approval. And I have no further comments at this time, but would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sawyer. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak? Yeah, Mr. Bob Bond is here. Okay, bring them in, please. Hello. Hello. Can, can, can you hear can me? You turn your, can you turn your video on? Um, yep, just one second. As soon as I find it. Okay. Um, just a second. Okay, oh, we had you for a minute. Okay, we can see you now for your hand. There, go ahead. We need your name, address, and postal code, please. 
Uh, your sound's off. Sorry, your sound is off. Should okay. be okay now. Yep. So my name is uh, Robert Bond. I live at 1110 Keeler Road, Torrance, Ontario, P0C 1M0. Did you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I'm just to watch the proceedings. Um, I'm hoping everything is okay with the variance um, request. Um, as as you as you looked at it, um, I have tried to leave the land as much as possible. So um, everything else I think is is good with it, and I don't think the actual proposed structure is going to um, have a detriment effect on what you're looking at from the water, not a medium large unit itself. Um, so I guess that's all I have to say. Okay, great, thank you. Is there anyone else here who wishes to speak in support or opposition to this application? No. no? Okay. Other questions from the members? No. Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that application A3822 bond to permit the construction of a single story boat port addition to an existing boathouse is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to permit a cumulative width of an existing and proposed boathouse to be 33 feet. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And we have some unfinished business. And that is Miss Darling. That's uh, A2122. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A2122 amended in the name of Excelsior 8 Inc. The subject property is known municipally as 1105 Long Lake Road. The application was deferred at the July 11th meeting so the property owner could have discussions with public work in regards to their concerns. The applicant's agent has met with the township's public work staff and submitted an amended site plan with stairs and landings that are relocated. The site plan and floor plans can be found on page 129, sorry, 229 to 236 of the agenda package. Four variances have changed since the last meeting. The new proposed stairs and landings are to be 6.8 feet from the southwest exterior side yard and 7.1 feet from the northeast exterior side yard. The proposed variances are 23.2 feet and 22.9 feet respectively. The proposed stairs and landings are to be 6.8 feet from the southwest ro road allowance line and 7.1 feet from the northeast road allowance. The proposed variances are 18.2 feet and 17.9 feet respectively. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended approval of the application subject to the existing gravel driveway on the road allowance to be removed and restored to the satisfaction of the Township's Public Works Department. Staff have no further comments on, at this time and are happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wish to speak on this? Yes, the agent. Okay. Hi, my name is Mr. Arbob. I'm the agent for the subject property. My address is 2323 Youngest Street, Street 503. Toronto, Ontario, N4P 2C9. And I'm, I'm, I'm here on behalf of Sean. He was not available to talk at the meeting due to the flight cancellation. Okay. If you haven't, um, we had the uh, project on July 11 um, um, to the presented to the committee members. 
uh, we, we work with the public works to remove the existing stairs and landing at the side of the property that was very close to the uh, property line. And we relocate them at uh, one at the south and one on the other side. Um, the rest of the application is as it, as it was before. If you have any question, I am happy to answer those. All right, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support or opposition? No? Other questions from the members? Seeing none. Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Quinn. Be it resolved that application A2122 amended Excelsior 8, Inc. to permit the reconstruction and enlargement of a single story dwelling with a walkout basement and to construct stairs and landings is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit the dwelling to be set back 26 feet from the high water mark. Two, to permit the, the dwelling to be set back five feet to, from the northern exterior lot line, which abuts the street on open original shore road allowance. And three, to permit stairs and a landing in front of the dwelling to be set back six feet from the southwesterly exterior lot line, which abuts the uh, street on open original shore road allowance, sorry, road allowance. And four, to permit the stairs and the landing alongside the dwelling to be set back seven feet from northeasterly exterior side lot line, which abuts a street on open original road allowance. These variants are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision are subject to the following condition. One, that the existing gravel driveway on the road allowance be removed and restored to the satisfaction of the township's public works department. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's Carrie. Okay, and there's no information items, no new business. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, moved by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Quinn. Be it resolved that the meeting hereby adjourns at 10.56 a.m. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Have a good time. We'll see you next month.